The French president, François Hollande, has tonight raised the terror threat levels, meaning France is at greater risk of attack after launching military action in Mali. An Islamist rebel group warned that French intervention could have consequences for its citizens throughout the world. French fighter planes have now killed more than 100 people. Separately, a French soldier lost his life and another is missing in Somalia after an unsuccessful attempt to free an intelligence officer held hostage by Al-Qaeda-linked rebels in Bula Marer, south of the capital, Mogadishu. It's feared the hostage may have been killed in the battle, along with 17 militants. Our international editor, Lindsay Hilsom, now reports. We know what he looked like from hostage videos he was forced to make, but Denis Alex is not his real name. And we don't know if, after this morning's commando raid, the French secret agent is dead or alive. Al-Shabaab, the Somali jihadi group holding him, say they still have him and a French commando they seized. This morning, the French defence minister seemed unsure exactly what had gone wrong. La nuit dernière, Last night, special forces deployed on site, and they very discreetly began to penetrate the hostages' location. They immediately faced strong resistance. Violent fighting occurred, during which, and I'm speaking cautiously, everything leads us to believe that, unfortunately, Denis Alex has been executed by his captors. During the attempt to free their colleague, a soldier lost his life following injuries, and another has gone missing. Across the continent in Chad, French forces were preparing to fly to Mali crossing the vast expanse of the Sahara. They landed in the Malian capital, Bamako, which some will stay to guard, while others continue the push north with Malian troops. Overnight, they armed their aircraft. Today, they rocketed the town of Connor, driving out the Islamists who are now retreating northwards. At least one French pilot was killed today when his helicopter was shot down near the town of Mopti. Last night, Malians listened to their president explaining his request for French military intervention. Mali and its people are not alone in this fight against terrorism and against those who would impose upon us a medieval obscurantist dictatorship, cutting off our feet and hands, raping our women and destroying our cultural heritage. But spare a thought for the relatives of eight French hostages being held by the jihadis in Mali. The hope is that they keep the hostages as a last resort and that when their back is against the wall, they'll trade the hostages for their lives. That's my hope. But as more French troops poured into Mali today, a leader of Ansar Dine, one of the major Malian jihadi groups, said the hostages were facing death, and he put the blame on the French president, François Hollande. Many Malians have welcomed the French intervention, which they hope will free them from the threat of harsh Islamic law. But the danger to French citizens around the world has sharply increased. Well, before tonight's announcement of increased security across France, I spoke to Stephen O'Brien, who's Britain's special envoy to the Central African Sahel region, which includes much of Mali. The French have talked about a terrorist base being developed on Europe's doorstep, and I asked him whether this prospect is why the UK is backing this action. Well, I think the word prospect is already slightly behind the times. There is a serious uh, rebel insurgency and takeover of northern Mali which is in the northern part of the broader Sahel region. And but in terms been... of a base for target, targeting European uh, targets, including the UK, is that really a worry to you? Well, because it's Al-Qaeda Islamic Maghreb and there are some other disparate groups, but with fundamentalist Islam informing them and with certain declared aims, uh, there is a real worry that at the moment this is an intent to occupy that what was ungoverned space uh, with a view to... Uh, being able to exercise their power along both the illegal smuggling routes and that would ultimately threaten the security of the underbelly of Europe. And you can see where those connections might lie. Well, you talk about that assessment being sort of behind the times, but actually, haven't, isn't that hard of it that we've been... We're a bit late. Uh, we, there's been all sorts of diplomatic wranglings. We've got, in a way, caught up in the sort of bureaucracy of diplomacy, and the French have just got impatient and had to go for it. No, I don't think it is like that. In fact, the international community has come together in a very remarkable way over the last few months. And you have to remember 
with the UN resolutions that have been passed, these have been passed uh, in a completely united way. So you have the It's still focus... taken months, though, and the French, in a way, have run out of patience. Well, I think events on the ground will always determine. There was always an expectation that there would need to be a preparedness to be able to marshal an African-led military uh, capability to support the Malian army, to retake uh, the northern part of their own country. Uh, but clearly, events have moved somewhat faster, and in the last few days, the Malian government has made a request of France, the obvious uh, people whom they may make a request to, uh, to support them in resisting the sudden advance of these rebels. But given that the fundamentalists have been saying for months that if um, a military action was launched, they would launch terror attacks in Europe, isn't there a danger that the Europe, Europe is going to be targeted now in a way that it wouldn't have been before? Well, I think it would be wrong to suggest that this is prompting that. Uh, the analysis which we share, we think the French have been extremely energetic in uh, looking at, at the true uh, threat and the scale of challenge that this represents. And that threat uh, is assessed to exist in any event. So it's very important that we recognise that this is already in place. And the question now is how does the international community respond to what is an existential challenge?